Hello and welcome to my channel Bevy with Beth. I'm Beth and here on this channel I talk all about polycystic ovarian syndrome, the symptoms, how to cope with them and how my personal journey with PCOS is going. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below to catch my videos every single week and today we're going to be talking more about weight loss. So first of all, a disclaimer, I will be talking numbers in this video as well as the rest of the series on my PCOS weight loss journey. I will be talking about what weight I am currently, some of my weight goals as well as calories, my intake and calorie goals and all that kind of thing, as well as the macronutrients, especially focusing on a more keto based diet. So if any of that would be at all upsetting for you to watch or at all uh, triggering for your eating disorder, then I completely understand and I don't want to be contributing to those kind of negative internal thoughts. So please don't watch this series. I have lots of other content on my channel about eating well for PCOS, having a healthy diet. I even talk a little bit about keto and why it works without going into the details of numbers and definitely without talking about restrictions. So if that would be more helpful to you, then feel free to find those videos. Um, on my channel here but if it's quite comfortable for you to talk about these kind of things especially if you have PCOS and you're currently trying to work out how on earth you're supposed to lose weight with this disorder then can keep watching because I'm going to be sharing the tips that I have had success with in the past in my early diagnosis stages and then we're also going to be looking at where I am at currently and how this next month goes for me trying to lose some more weight. So now let's take a look at where I am this week. I did nearly forget to mention as well that I am also going to be doing a live video here on YouTube on Saturdays at 3 p.m. London time where I will be showing you what I'm doing for meal prep. I'll actually be cooking live uh, at 3 p.m. London time here on YouTube for you to see what it is in a bit more detail for what I'm actually eating, especially for the evening meals and some of my lunches as well. If you can be there, then I'd love to see you at 3 p.m. London time here on YouTube for my live cook with me meal prep video. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is uh, my weight and where I'm at. So I don't know how much I actually weighed when I was first diagnosed or at the very least I can't remember it. I'm fairly certain that my doctor weighed me at the time and she either didn't tell me what it was or I think we, what we talked about was my BMI and not about my actual weight I think. Though that doesn't make sense to me now because we set a goal weight. That's really annoying me now. I thought I just didn't know what I was when I got diagnosed but you know I think I've blanked it out I think it's because I knew that it was a starting weight and that it wasn't really relevant and that I originally made my diet changes to feel healthier to get my energy back it was the lethargy that was really that was getting me down like I wasn't happy with my weight but honestly my motivation for going to the doctors was because I felt so bad so I wasn't really thinking about weight loss at that time. And I made all of these changes and felt a lot better in myself, but I didn't lose any weight. And that became really frustrating. So that's when I started to transition into more of a diet mentality in a way. I know that I was somewhere between 95 and 100 kilograms when I was diagnosed. I do know that I lost some weight before I then weighed myself. And so when I weighed myself back in 2019 was when I decided to go on the keto diet. I weighed myself and I was 91 kilograms. So I know that I'd already made some changes before that late stage, before I went keto. And then I managed over the next six to eight months doing keto, because it was a bit on and off in the beginning, uh, with a friend's wedding and Christmas, <laughs> it didn't. I didn't get a clean start. 
So probably from January until June of 2020, I got down to 86 kilograms. And then when we came into the winter, kind of October, November time, we went into a third lockdown and I was getting very claustrophobic in my house. I just wasn't happy in my house. I wanted a pet, I wanted a garden and I just needed more space because I'd now been working most of the year, or half over half the year, I'd been working out of my living room and that was all very intense. And I hadn't really taken any holiday because there was nowhere to go. And I was feeling very, very claustrophobic and just not satisfied at all with life. So my food went out the window. As the weather got worse as well, my exercise also reduced and I just started eating more, eating more carbs. I had things like um, apples and stuff because of the season. And then December came <laughs> and Christmas and I just got all the food, all the food, everything. I ate it all <laughs> and I felt awful. And I knew that in January I wanted to start, um, and you know, getting back into proper ketosis. Yeah, so I've got a video on here of January of what I did to get myself back into ketosis. And that went well, and um, I've definitely been mostly ketosis, a little bit low carb here and there when a few things have come in, but main, mainly in ketosis. Uh, but with moving house and setting everything up here, I haven't really been tracking anything much and just kind of eating what I like when I like within the keto ranges. And I am sure that there's been some carb creep in there. When you don't watch it, when you're not really thinking about it, it's easy just to have some bread and think, oh, it's just this one time. And then when you look back on the week, it's like, oh, actually three, four out of those seven days I've had bread. So <laughs> it's very easy to do. And I wasn't um, punishing myself or worried about that. I was just going through life and, and I was doing the best that I could. But I did notice that my weight had started kind of not kind of plateaued again where I wasn't doing that extra thing that was needed to get me to lose some more weight and also I wasn't having my optimum energy in June and July last year I just had so much energy all the time it was absolutely brilliant and I wanted to get back to that um partly because I'm going to be getting a dog so I wanted to, I want to have the energy to, to take the dog for a walk, to play games with it, to have, you know, the energy around the dog. So I wanted to get myself back up and running, feeling as energetic as I was this time last year. And I definitely don't think I'm going to get down to 86 kilograms just in this month. Weight loss just takes so long with PCOS. You need so much persistence and patience. And unfortunately, you have to be pretty perfect if you want to have perfect weight loss, right? So I know that I'm not gonna be perfect. There are gonna be weekends when um, I eat more than I should, or there is gonna be an event where I end up eating carbs, and especially with everything opening up now as well. So I'm not gonna punish myself for any of that. It's literally just gonna be when I'm at home on my own, I'm gonna do the best that I can. I'm gonna make sure that the food that I buy into the house is gonna be the best. I'm gonna focus on cooking, so that I've got meals prepared for me at the end of the day, so that if work is very stressful or very busy, I don't have to think about food. I know what I've got, I know I enjoy it, and I can just get on and have that. So that's kind of the plan. I want to lose some weight. I don't have a specific number in mind, but I'll find out what my current weight is, and then we'll just see what happens. I'm gonna weigh myself once a week, because there'll be so much fluctuation if I do it every day. I just don't think that's helpful. Um, so I'm gonna weigh myself every week and then at the end of the month, we'll see if I've had any weight loss or not. Um, so I won't really consider if I say lost two kilograms in one week, that doesn't mean I'm not gonna put three kilograms on in the next week. So that's how I'm gonna do it is weigh myself every week and then at the end of the month, we'll have a look at whether or not I have lost weight. And then we can do like a review of what I think went wrong and all that kind of stuff. But I thought as much as it may be interesting for you to see my journey, ideally, I'd like this to be helpful for you. So I'm go going to give you at least five tips in every single video, the ones that I am following now, things that I found successful last time, and how that kind of has worked for me. So I've taken 
this week has been my breakfast. During breakfast, I've just picked up the camera for two minutes just to give you a tip that I think if you followed, you might find helpful if you're not already. Um, and definitely things that I did last time, back in this time last year, that I found absolutely essential for aiding my weight loss. So let's check out what those five tips are for this week. first thing that I did uh, after I was diagnosed with insulin resistance and PCOS was to make my breakfasts completely carb free or at least like as low as I possibly could like I didn't even include um, low fruits like berries or um, really any vegetables at the time I didn't even put um, bell pepper in my omelettes and things I just had bacon and eggs, pretty much with an avocado, and that was that was my breakfast. And what I found was that meant my insulin stayed low first thing in the morning, and I was much more satiated. So normally, like before that, I would have had say toast or cereal, cereal I mean chocolate cereal was my go-to for a long time and of course that would barely last me an hour, an hour after having that breakfast no matter how large a portion I ate I would be like, desperately hungry again and I just found that by um, removing all the carbs I could eat that breakfast and I would be good to go for probably about three to four hours without needing to snack, without really needing any other kind of food, and other than maybe a cup of coffee, <laughs> in the mornings and I could go then through until my lunch. So that was definitely the first thing that I did where I noticed immediately the removal of carbs, the removal of sugar from my morning breakfast, morning breakfast, you know what I mean, my breakfast. Uh, meant that I could go much longer without having to constantly eat all the time. The next thing I learned was that protein is actually the most satiating out of all the macronutrients, which means if you want to reduce your carbs down, especially when it comes to breakfast, although I do find it applies to lunch as well, that if you just had a very fat heavy meal you might not feel very hungry but you also wouldn't feel very energized either and that's one of the reasons why I, even now I try to stick to a fairly protein heavy first meal and I add as much protein as I can to my lunch as well because it really does help just to feel less hungry especially when you're giving up on the carbs you don't want to then be depriving yourself and feeling hungry on top of carb cravings so that would be my next tip was to make sure that you are eating enough protein and particularly when it comes to the first meal of day making sure that you've got a fairly decent amount of protein in that first meal will again really help to put off feeling hungry again Our lines cross. We're Another thing that I found to be really important for me to have success in my weight loss journey was I realised that my cortisol levels are quite high first thing in the morning. It's part of a natural process. We all have a spike of cortisol first thing in the morning. And for me, the best way to bring those levels down, to reduce my anxiety and to 
just generally make my body function optimally is to have breakfast in the first place. So I have tried things like intermittent fasting and um, it is definitely a lot easier on keto to kind of put off your first meal. But I definitely found that if I didn't eat first thing, or, you know, fairly quickly in the morning, that my cortisol levels would remain high and I, it just didn't set me up for the best kind of day. So that's what worked best for me was to actually have breakfast which means breakfast being the most important meal of the day is actually true for me but that doesn't necessarily mean that would be the case for everybody so I take a look and find out what works best for you but for me it was to definitely have breakfast But I always find Thursday mornings the hardest. It's not, I don't know. You'd think it would be like Monday, but I find Monday's actually my best morning. After a weekend of extra sleep and setting myself up for the week, I actually, Monday morning is on my best. They're my easiest. I can get up, no trouble. And it's not Friday, which is the last day of the week, which would make more sense. And it's not Wednesday, which is the middle of the week, which would be understandable. No, it's Thursday. <laughs> it just is what it is. So this morning I got up about 15 minutes later than normal. Instead of forcing myself to do some yoga, I just sat for a few minutes looking out at my garden. And now I've gone straight ahead and instead of making the uh, yogurt and berries breakfast, I've cooked myself up. Cooked up not as an omelette, but just as <laughs> a deconstructed omelette. And um, and my coffee, and I'm just gonna sit down here, eat my breakfast, wake up a bit more, let the caffeine set in before I then start work. And I just, I honestly didn't plan it this way, although I should have known because Thursdays are my worst day. But um, it just fits in really well. <clears throat> it just fits in really well this morning that um, the tip is about intuitive eating in a way. So I am gonna leave um, Abby Sharps, the registered dietitian here on YouTube, I'm going to leave her intuitive eating playlist in the description box down below. Because as much as when you have something like insulin resistance, it's basically impossible to um, eat intuitively because our bodies don't know how to do that we we you know the signals when it comes to how much sugar we want to eat how awful we feel when we eat sugar how difficult it is to reduce the amount of sugar that we're eating that whole system is it doesn't work properly and it's unfair to just let let it go and just eat as much sugar as you like. You're never going to feel well and you definitely won't lose weight if you listen to how much your body wants to eat sugar. So there is an element of intuitive eating that we can't follow. But I think particularly if you've done dieting before and if you want to lose weight with PCOS, but you also don't want to get caught up in the, the diet culture of kind of punishing yourself, doing crazy restrictive diets that are just never going to be successful. And especially if you've been in the past, you know, maybe pre-diagnosis or even after you were diagnosed, you've tried a, you know, traditional diet and found that actually it's caused you to put on more weight rather than lose weight then intuitive eating is a great way to learn it, it may, mainly i think it's the gentle nutrition aspect of intuitive eating and i personally last year found it really helpful when abby released her intuitive eating um, video series and she allows for a lot of um, flexibility within those guidelines and so i found it a very encouraging series on how to introduce or to follow some of the guidelines of 
intuitive eating whilst still technically being on something like the keto diet, whilst taking my PCOS into consideration. But one of the ways that I have definitely introduced that kind of gentle nutrition side of things is as much as I tend to eat the same things all the time, when it comes to what time I'm eating, which order I eat those meals in, like if I want to have salmon first thing in the morning instead of for my evening meal, I can switch that up and like today, I have skipped like the first meal that like what I would normally eat um, for first thing in the morning, gone straight to my second breakfast <laughs> ingredients. I've cooked it the way I want to and I've allowed something like missing my yoga session and all that kind of thing. And that that flexibility makes eating in a specific way possible or easier or feel much less like a punishment and much more like nourishment. <laughs> So my last tip for this week is about intermittent fasting and I want you to talk about intermittent fasting because basically it's completely down to you as an individual what works best. For me I found that I needed to have breakfast. I said it earlier that um, I need to have breakfast. So intermittent fasting by putting off your first meal of the day doesn't work for me. But on the other hand, I have done that. And what I found was as much as my anxiety was higher, um, my ability to cope with stress for the rest of the day was fairly diminished. The process of not eating so especially being in ketosis if you're on a full keto diet then putting off your first meal is a lot easier to do in the first place but also if you're not on a keto diet then it has even more benefits with the lowering of insulin so if you're eating a normal diet and then you intermittent fast especially if you put your first meal of the day off until later on in the day this massively reduces your insulin levels, which will um, make a massive difference to your blood sugar levels throughout the day. And anecdotally, definitely seems to help with insulin resistance. But again, like I said, I found that eating in the morning was actually more beneficial for me when it came to the rest of the day, coping with the rest of the day rather than just the benefits of the insulin, but I definitely found that. I found things like my hunger cues were much um, much clearer. When I was hungry, I was actually craving nutrition rather than craving any kind of like mouth food or any residual carb cravings would be basically non-existent. I could quite easily make a healthy decision for my first meal of the day. I didn't get that kind of like when you're so hungry that you end up going into kind of a binge to compensate. I didn't find any of that. And I did try for a long time to simply have my green tea first thing in the morning because there's no calories in it, there's no sugar or salt in it. So it was just water basically, but flavored um, with a bit of caffeine. And I did find that that helped a little bit with keeping my cortisol levels low. But when I then stopped intermittent fasting, was eating in the morning, I, I realised how much that not eating in the morning was affecting kind of my mood and my ability to cope with stresses throughout the day. And I decided that for me, that wasn't the best way forward. I needed to find other ways to lower my insulin. If intermittent fasting is something that you're interested in, I definitely say it could be worth it. With insulin resistance, I do believe it, it can be very helpful. But don't be afraid to do some experimenting on yourself and find out when your fasting window works best for you and don't just assume that not having breakfast is going to be the only way to do it so that's what i learned last time or that's the first five tips anyway that i learned last time uh so now let's see where i am at currently in my weight 
so that then we can set maybe a few goals for the coming week. The first weigh-in. Let's see what we get. Two. Okay. So I'm currently 92 kilograms, which is what it is. Like I said, I'm going to set a weight loss goal, like I'll lose what I can lose. But what the two things that I do want to focus on is one, obviously keeping my carbs below 30 grams. That's what I find works for me the best. I also want to be hitting at least 1800 calories every single day. For some reason I forgot that that was part two. 1800 calories a day. So I hope that you have found this helpful, that you might be able to use some of the tips that I've had success with. This is just like the beginning of the journey. So hopefully next week I'll have a bit more insights on how things are going for me and any progress that I have seen. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to leave me a comment with anything that you want me to specifically mention or look at or observe in these videos that you would find particularly helpful. Thank you for watching my PCOS weight loss journey. Let's see what happens next week. Mm -hmm.